Well, welcome to this channel of Professor Manish Nair. Today we are going to touch on a very, very important aspect of how to crack an HR interview. So we have a set of 25 questions coming your way and this has been done with the research of almost 24 companies that I have actually closely worked with when I was working as a placement in charge with Jet King and also in close association with tra training and placement wherever I have worked in the colleges. These 24 companies that I'm talking about are the companies which have almost stayed for last 10 years. They have been hiring every year and their process of hiring is very well established with us. That's the reason I've come out with a single one episode of 25 questionnaire, which will be very, very important for all the freshers to you know appear to get acquainted with this, know it, understand, practice it and maybe master it. So I'm giving a great confidence with this particular episode of ours. But my theory, a triangle theory of interview question is persisting with this. I have come with an idea that most of the students, they do not remember many words, many parameters, many points. So that's the reason I have come with three distinct points based on the research of all the 24 companies that I'm talking about and the HR that I have already discussed and got to know from there, uh, from them that what they seek in a candidate. And that's the reason my triangle theory is applicable with this particular set of special episode or special shoot for interview questionnaire. What my triangle theory says is before you appear for an interview, you should be researching the company first of all and you should also know the job description or the job profile from the company from the hr or from wherever that you can possibly find out third the most important aspect is based on the company based on the job description and profile you need to customize your resume so that you are the best fit the best opportunity that you are getting is not underutilized in terms of building a resume. Now, uh, I'm again coming with three points as to what resume should look like. Now, we all know that resume is a look and feel. So it has to be appealing. Why an HR who gets roughly 20 seconds to reject or accept your resume should find your resume appealing rather than a dull. So make it as a look and feel. The one that appeals you the best should be forwarded to the HR. The second point is uh, the resumes are to impress, not to express. So don't be elaborative. And that's the reason the third point is don't make it cross the two pages. And whatever that you are writing, whatever heads that you are writing should be written in bullets. Mind you all that resume is a standard document, but it becomes dynamic because every job description, every company has a different aspect of judging resume. So that's the reason I have shown it my earlier slide that you need to have all the three things in place as a triangle theory to form the resume. I hope you have understood this. So I'm again flashing this for the benefit of all so that you are able to understand it thoroughly. Let me take to the individual questionnaire of HR. Now again, I'm stating this. This is for all of us to understand that 24 companies and 24 HR are there to give us this insight of how to appear. And that's the reason my triangle theory says that I have jotted down three points for every question that will be appearing on the screen so that we get the rationale of answering the question in the most logical manner rather than an unorganized way to appear in an interview. So let's begin our first question. Invariably, the first question that lands up is introduce yourself. And by the way, many a time we say that the name has been uttered by uh, the HR or not. But invariably, if it is uttered, you don't need to repeat. Don't need to repeat anything that is in the resume. But in case if the HR call you by your name, then I think you should be ready uh, by not repeating and uh, sit there consciously 
uh, know what is happening and as soon as your name is called so do not repeat that and what you can definitely showcase is not repeating your resume you can first talk about your educational qualification after your name let's say your name is not called by the HR so take your name so this is Manish Nair you can always quote your name like this right instead of saying me myself or I this is the best way this is Manish Nair okay now educational qualification do not repeat exactly or exact verbatim from your resume you can say that you have done your uh, maybe SSC from uh, from a particular place maybe if you have done it from Delhi you can quote it with a percentage uh, tell that you have done your higher secondary from a different place and you have secured what percentage that you have secured and the third thing that you can say is that graduation you are doing in Nagpur or maybe some other places what you are trying to make it different is that the places that you have gone uh, makes you flexible adaptable and that is the point to be narrated along with the educational qualification most of the time I recommend student not to write percentages in the resume so that that becomes a point also to discuss many a times the second thing that you should be talking is your exposure to your domain many a time if you are a science commerce arts engineering or even a doctor and you are applying for a job always quote your experience with your learning what is that aspect which you have loved to do maybe with a project maybe as a group task maybe as an assignment maybe as a internship talk about that domain and similarly as soon as you talk about your domain correlate with your career objective and you can always say sir having worked under this domain I have got great experience and a rich experience makes me to sit in front of you to appear for a growing company like yours where I can immediately start my career you can correlate with this and make a logical sense here so introduce yourself should essentially have three parameters let's go to the next question tell us something more in case if the HR is not satisfied you answering that question sufficiently he would definitely like to know more about you so what you have already said do not repeat instead the first thing that you can say is where you are born and brought up so native means your birthplace so talk about it the second thing that you can talk about is your family size never never say that I I have a family of four including me rather you can always say we have a, we are a family size of four member my father works with a forest department my mother is a housewife a younger sister who is studying in class 8 always make it that sound you know again rational talk about an hobby the third point you can always say that I am a great great fan of indoor games or an outdoor game whichever is your liking but correlate to the skill sets so why I like playing cricket or football is because I have a great liking and I learn how to uh, be disciplined first and second uh, be a team player so correlate with a skill that you have learned so I think these three points are more than enough to answer tell us something more about yourself normally you get a question do you have strengths can you mention your two strengths can you mention your three strengths then answering this becomes very easy but what to say is again three pointer as triangle theory you are a good listener first of all make it a point that sir I am a good listener a good listener makes a good learning so I am a fast learner and because I am fast learner I like to take initiative I think these are the most important points that an HR would like to hear moving on uh, if the strengths are asked the weaknesses would certainly be asked so they would also ask you would you have weaknesses too so admit it if you have and if you haven't realized I think you need to jot it down on a paper with 100 strengths and maybe 100 weaknesses if you have how do you do that that's a task and that's that takes time and it is like over a period of time you realize that you have certain strengths which are optimum certain weaknesses which you need to take care in terms of your professional existence take one task at a time this is my area of improvement perhaps sir I being a reserve which most of us 
uh, nowadays i i feel that they are social but uh, they do not mix with strangers so often so you can always say that sir i am reserved so i am working on it i know the importance of this in a professional environment at the same time i i would like to do things alone and that is also my area of improvement which i have realized and i uh, want to ask uh, for people i know individually sometimes you fail so it's always good to ask rather than tell so these are my areas which i need to improve upon i hope you have uh, understood by now so let me move on to the next question the next question coming is why should we hire you would have again three pointer coming your way tell the hr or the recruiter that you are qualified and that you are qualified you are eligible and that's the reason you are sitting across getting interviewed or screen the second point you can also say is you pos you do possess the desired skill which is the demand of that job profile or the job description the third thing is you can say sir i have always carried this positive mind frame to excel in life and since this is an opportunity for me to appear and crack this interview i have the same same positive attitude today so you can have these three points frame it according to your own language uh, you can frame it according to your convenience your own vocabulary and come out with your fresh answers why should we hire you three pointers what if you do not get this job there might be a tricky question coming your way so again a three pointer no if i am not accepted so no means next opportunity for me tell the hr that if at all you are not selected then there would certainly be some mistakes made unknowingly by you so you need to know that what all mistakes you have committed so you need to know identify and rectify immediately and the third thing that you can do is start a fresh so even if i don't get this job i am sure that i am going to get the next job coming my way because i am a hard learner a conscious learner so these three pointers make a lot of logical sense when you answer what if you do not get this job moving on to the next question the next question is where do you see yourself in next 5 years again it's a very tricky question but you need to understand the first pointer coming your way is sir i have a plan for 5 years what i have done is i have split this 5 years into first 2 years where i would learn from the organization and get empowered right from the third year to fifth year i wish i take at least one promotion if not two and the third thing that you can say is sir i would like to ensure that every year that i start working from the inception year i would like to grow every year differently rather i should have an experience of 5 year into 5 year different 5 experiences rather than one year of experience multiplied by 5 year which i would not say that i have a 5 year experience rather it would be one year experience so i hope i have made my point very clear that if you have the next 5 year plan you should have uh, split into a two first two years and the next three years and then again every year you should update that plan for next five years and ensure that every year whatever you are putting in into a, into the corporate world or the professional environment whichever company that you are working with should be five different years that is a point to be narrated and do it emphatically right what are your short and long term goal this is in conjunction with the last a uh, question that we have seen always say that my short term goal is the first two years now explain this short term and long term you need to explain this this is the first two years the first year i would be learning from the company and the second year i would like to start giving back to the company so i know that second year i would be independent but from third year to fifth year i would like to ensure that i take higher responsibility in terms of one promotion at least and the third thing is always work on my skill sets because if i am looking myself for future growth then i need to work on my skill sets those skill sets which are pertinent to my job profile those skill sets which are futuristic those skill sets which are higher order skills 
So my short term and long term is always related to two years and five years, which I keep updating after every year. This is the three pointer for an for a question, what are your short term and long term goal? How will you update and upgrade? Again, a tricky question. Three pointer coming your way. You can always say, sir, I can up, get updated every time if I stay connected with my teachers or seniors. How will I upgrade, sir? Learn newer technology. At the same time, sir, I can connect with like minded professionals through platforms like Linden and other social which are still professional environment where updation and upgradation if I am part of that group will eventually fall in place. So this is my definition of updating and upgrading. What motivates you? First point of coming your go way is what motivates you? The first point is your goal, your objective, your ambition. You are there surviving in this world, be it personal or professional, it is because of your goal setting. That makes you alive, that keeps you alive, that keeps you going. So my goal motivates me. The second thing is I have a strong desire to excel in life and prove that as a fresher, whatever, whatever my education was, I have done it seriously and meticulously, religiously, so that here I am to translate into my practical world and show that what worth or what value I have. And third thing is also financial independence. Till now I have been taking money and I have been sponsored by my parents. I would like to be independent financially and maybe start giving my family back and my society back at the same time. So what motivates me is the three pointer that you have just seen. Work or money. So what is more important to you, whether work or money? Your three pointer coming your way is work because work gives me relevant experience to survive in a professional environment. Work, it is a resultant you, we all know that money is the resultant of our work. So the amount of work, the quality of work that we exercise, we exhibit, money is correlated to that. So your value is built based only on the amount, the quality and the experience that we have. Money is just a resultant of the, your work. The third thing is, if you're looking for a future, you need to upskill yourself. How would you upskill? Only through work. It cannot come sitting idly or reading theoretically. It has to be how much you have seen the rains, the sun and the difficulties that make you what you are today. So I hope work or money you can choose wisely and why so three pointer will justify the answer for this particular question are you a leader or a follower so the first this is again a tricky question an hr wants uh, is judging you the hr is judging you whether you are saying yourself leader for the heck of it or a follower which you are so Try and answer with a three pointer. You can always say, sir, be it a leader or a follower, I don't know, but I am certainly a team player. I would like to work in a team. Second thing is, I always take initiative. I am an initiator. So if I am a team player and an initiator, naturally that makes me a people person. What does that mean? What does that mean is, I understand people. I understand that there are different people uh, with different predisposition. So if you are a team play player and if you can allow everyone to contribute and do it amicably, then I think you can always subtly push your initiative in terms of your plan strategy. At the same time, when you are a people person, you would always like to go back to people and work with them. In case if you are not, you can proudly say that you are a follower, but you are a team player and you like to be part of an initiative, uh, initiative idea. Uh, you are an initiator in case you can always say. And if most of us are people person, but at the same time, we are averse to knowing the characteristics or the traits of people. So put it, you can choose to frame the answer your own way, but do it very, very logical with 
the right examples endorsing whether you are a leader or a follower what are your job expectations now this is again a tricky question the first pointer coming your way is sir my expectation with the job is that i want to achieve the practical experience because till now i have been learning and that was all restricted to my theory my concepts but now i want to now i want to translate or transfer it into a practical independence is something that i am looking as an expectation of the job the second thing is since i was not earning and now i would also like to be financially independent so that i can invest upon myself and also give back to my family who have raised me uh, to be what i am today third is also i am looking to towards this job to give me that kind of a professional growth which can take me to higher level and i can contribute significantly over a period of time so this is the three pointer to answer what are your job expectations are you a team player this would often a question propping up in an interview so your three pointer as triangle theory is you can always say sir even if that game is of two player like chess or badminton you can say sir it requires team individual brilliance uh, are unnoticed they stand in isolation because there is always a team player who has either win won or lost so i understand the importance of being a team player second is even in education while pursuing education we have always formed a team in terms of assignment group task internship projects symposium seminars workshops where i realize the importance of what a individual can contribute to a team and what team what a team is to excel with that contribution from the individuals coming in third the most important point is we all join this world or we are exposed to this world with lot of dependency we turn it into independence one day we become independent also but we can never never be satisfied never exist without the interdependence of people so you can subtly quote all the three things and endorse to the fact that interdependence is something that we all human beings would ever ever live with so yes by going by that i am a great team player i have the team spirit and i am a team player did you work under pressure did you work under pressure any time now again try to try to bring about some relevance some logic so the first thing that you can say is yes sir i have always worked under pressure while playing games in during my childhood days i have seen that i cannot win all the time there are pressure there are pressure situations where games are lost if we are focusing on the game on course during the process you are able to focus and win matches or win games so games have given me that opportunity to learn that how to handle a pressure second there are so many problems in life unless we have stayed calm we cannot handle that problem or find a solution so small problems have made me realize that stay calm and search for a solution rather than sit on a problem that is the second pointer the third pointer is always this time bound objectives because they have uh, stipulated time then limited resources and you have limited people to work with the time bound objectives the time bound objectives make me learn how to be patient enough and be highly focused and calm and achieve the desired result so i know how to handle the pressure by being focused being calm and patient i hope these three pointers will give lot of sense to answering this particular question did you work under pressure any time you can quote an example and correlate with all the three pointers that's another way of looking at answering this particular question give us an example of uh, your management skill this might come up 
So if you have managed so many things in your school, college, which you, which normally I see a lot of students boost about. So uh, as a fresher, you can always quote, sir, my management skill says that you need to be result focused, that the result has to be achieved. Now, the second thing is, if you are working with a team, the most critical aspect of people management is important. So if there are different people with different mindset, you need to work closely with them, not taking them personal and at the same time ensuring that the result is achieved. And how do you do that? Unless you monitor the process. So monitoring the process is also important. My management skill is to remain focused on the process so the results are there and what involves in that process is people, resources, I think you need to cleverly manage that to fetch the desired result. So I hope this is well established with you all. Give us an example of your management skill, the three beautiful points coming your way. Do you get irritated? Again, one of the trickiest question to see how cleverly you answer this. The first pointer is, yes, you have been saying this in your so show that consistency. If you are if you are saying continuously uh, that you are a team player, you can definitely be consistent here. And I once again quoted that you are a team player. What it means is, it means that you always like to work with people and you have understood people. So how they are, they are different personality traits. So you know that people uh, are irritated, people who do, do not move, people who are highly biased, people who are highly opinionated, uh, people who are younger to you, people who do not speak at all, people who are good at executor. You can name few and say that there are different personality traits. So being a team player or being social, I understand how people behave. And the third pointer is, I do not take things personally. So if you do not take it personally, your psyche will be balanced and you'll be focused more on the job rather than people. So that's where, uh, that's what make me less irritated or negligibly irritated because I understand these three pointers. So I hope I have made this point clear as well. What is your salary expectation? Often a tricky question. So I'm giving you three pointers again, triangle theory persisting year, existing year. What is your salary expectation? The best way that you can answer is, sir, according to the job description, the salary uh, what that was quoted as a window or a package was this, but I leave it to you. I've been answering this entire HR questionnaire series, sir. I hope I expect rather that you have found my worth and value that I bring to the organization. But I leave it to you for your judgment. I leave it to your judgment. You can say this. Third point is a little lighter sense. You can always say, sir, salary that makes me happy and brings smile on your face simultaneously. So there are three ways to answer what is your salary expectation. Frame it in your own way and be ready with this answer. What is success to you or what does success means to you? So again, a question with a three pointer. Success has come as celebration. So I rejoice, but I know that this is not going to be everlasting. So success, what it means to me is more responsibility. I'll be empowered to take higher responsibility. So definitely there will be a higher growth promising. Success only builds you and takes you to a higher altar. So higher growth is definitely in the offing. And at the same time, there will be a great platform to learn effective problem solving and decision making. Why I say so? Because if I am Exposed to more responsibility, higher growth is ensured and at the same time, my higher order skills are getting developed. That's the reason why if success comes to you, I, I always go with an open mind to see that where I am growing. And this is the growth path defined in this logical answering of three pointers that I've just mentioned. Okay, what role you prefer in a project? So. Three pointers coming your way as triangle theory. Any role, why you should choose a role of a leader or a follower. Instead you say, sir, I am 
absolutely okay with any role as far as that role is responsible and accountable. At the same time, being having a great team spirit, I would also like to allow and involve people. If it's a group task, if it's a project which is to be done with many hands, I think I would allow and involve. In case if I am not a part of a team, then I expect that every team member who is part of that project should allow himself enough chance and in get involved as the spirit, as a team spirit. The third thing is we are there in a professional environment working with a corporate company. So bottom line has to be met and it has to be met within the stipulated time. So we have to be result oriented. So any role that makes us accountable, showing that team spirit and allowing and involving all people equally contributing and all doing it so to fetch that desired result. Right. What is success to you? So what is failure to you? So looking at the flip side of the coin, three pointer coming your way. If I fail, I will learn a lesson. If I learn a lesson, I would not like to repeat the same mistake. And if I have, I'm not repeating the same mistake, perhaps I am taking a fresh guard. Might be I'm committing a newer mistake, but not failing to take a fresh guard. That is my definition of a failure. I hope this has made your understanding better. Moving on. Any tough challenges, that, any tough challenge that you have faced till date? Now, this is again a tricky question. You need to frame a good answer for this. I'm helping you with the three pointer as triangle theory group task the biggest challenge ever is when you do it alone individual brilliance can always be exposed or exhibited but when it is a group task you can always recollect what was a challenge you found or you identified in a group task and group tasks are always often challenging so group task you can narrate it to one of the example that you have you individually must have faced so a group task involves a lot of people. So what I do is as a challenge, I split the task into smaller intervals, into smaller tasks. So smaller task makes us to go to a bigger task. So any tough challenge you faced? Yes, group task. They involve people. So what I do is I split the task into smaller intervals. And what do I do? I see what kind of people are working with me. So I do a SWOT analysis of all the people involved in that particular group task. And I distribute the task based on the strengths and the weaknesses of that particular individual so that one who is best capable of exercising that particular job, the part of the job, everyone gets involved and the ultimate result, the ultimate project, the ultimate result, uh, uh, the ultimate task is completed and it is completed with flying color, with brightness, with the desired aim or objective. So that's any tough challenge that you have faced. You can quote one example, any example that you have faced in your past and align your thought process with this. What do you know about us? Often a company asks about itself, whether the candidate or the aspiring is knowing about them or not enough. So the first pointer is you can check the website. That's the reason research in the company was the first slide itself. I, the first point of the first slide itself uh, is has become so important, right? So inevitably you need to check the site website of the company that you are appearing interview for and get all the relevant details. What you can say after this is, sir, the company operational area is this whatever the area is and if you are passionate then club this second point with the third point and say sir link your passion to the company's operational area and say sir i have been passionate i have a great interest of uh, making a career in this particular segment and that's the reason i'm here uh, to get screen and get uh, kickstart my career Maybe you can put it subtly and make your point very clear that yes, you have gone through the website, you know the companies in and out thoroughly, uh, everything about the company well and link your passion 
as per the company's website, the area that interests you. Do you have any question? Often, why not? You should have one. So, the first pointer is, so what would be my role, my job profile in the company? So, get the awareness of this, either one. Second, do the company provide enough training? So, always give this uh, impression, always give this impression of you being a training driven person as you always want to seek for newer learning and growth. So express this. When you express this, your intentions are correlated. The third thing is, so when can I join the company? Or what would be the joining date? Any of the three questions are relevant and they have straight away come out from those 24 companies and the 24 HR that were surveyed. What do you think how you fared in this interview this might be a question which to test your confidence an HR or the recruiter might ask so the three pointer as triangle theory coming your way sir I have answered all the questions in the right direction even if you have if you have failed to answer one or two question you can always choose to say this speak this right direction your direction your intentions were right second I've shown the right attitude for learning and the third is I think I am best fit for this job and as I have prepared myself to qualify to be job ready I think I have fared well this in, in this interview I have fared well in this interview I think if you are answering these three pointers you are sure to get a confident ranking with this particular question asked right so this is skill influencer Manish Nair this is my professional email ID and a whatsapp number if you need, need or if you seek any help professionally you can definitely contact back but few statutory caution or a warning that I would like to give it to you all is I have tried and given you a research or a survey of 24 good companies and the HR that I've talked about but the three pointers that I've mentioned is just for the sake of your understanding you can rephrase in your own terminology with your own vocabulary and make it as simple as possible so that the meaning is conveyed the most important is we need to convey the meaning the right way the right direction as I've been saying instead of taking exact answers you would know that resumes, videos and there are a lot of uh, you know uh, references available uh, online but the intention is to bring this bring something relevant something logical uh, rational to all of you so that you streamline your thought process and prepare your own original answer and sound new and fresh so wishing you all a great luck and God bless you all.